hadn't slept in four days. Not since the whisper started, hissing in my ears every time my eyes drooped shut. Stay awake, they urged, an incessant murmur that grew louder with the ticking clock. The first night was the easiest. The adrenaline of fear kept me alert, eyes wide open as I stared into the dark corners of my room, searching for whatever had whispered into my ear the moment I had started to drift into sleep. I found nothing but shadows and the usual suspects of a creaky house that seemed to groan under the weight of my fear. By the second night, things began to appear. Shapes, moving just out of the corner of my eye, figures that slinked and disappeared when I turned to face them directly. I told myself it was just the fatigue, my mind playing tricks on me. But then, the air would grow cold, and I'd feel it, the unmistakable presence of something else. Someone else. Don't sleep, the voice came again, a whisper so clear it could have been someone leaning right beside me, breath cold against my ear. I jumped up, turning in a frantic circle, my heart slamming against my ribs. There was nothing there. Nothing but the furniture and the faint, mocking echo of my own rapid breathing. The third day, my sanity began to fray. Objects seemed to move on their own. My coffee mug slid across the table while I stared at it, too stunned to react. Books fell off the shelf without cause. And the whispering grew into voices, multiple voices, speaking over each other in languages I couldn't understand. They were angry, insistent. Stay awake! They chorused as the sun set on the third day. I tried everything to stay alert. I watched horror movies, the screams and the music loud in my ears. I splashed cold water on my face every half hour. I even resorted to pain, pinching myself, slapping my face. Anything to keep the darkness at bay. The fourth night was the worst. As darkness swathed the room, the shadows seemed to thicken, to pulse with a life of their own. I could hear the whispers turn into chuckles, low and menacing, surrounding me. And then they began to appear, the apparitions. A little girl, no more than six, stood at the foot of my bed, her eyes hollow, her nightgown splattered with something dark and viscous. She stared at me, her lips moving soundlessly. I blinked, and she rushed forward, stopping mere inches from my face. Don't sleep, or you'll stay with us, she hissed, her voice a chilling mix of innocence and malice. Then she was gone. I screamed, scrambling back against the headboard. The room spun around me, each shadow seeming to twist and writhe in glee. Another figure appeared, an old man, his skin ashen, eyes sunk deep into his skull. He pointed a gnarled finger at me, his other hand clutching at his chest where his heart should be. Stay awake, he croaked, before dissolving into a cloud of mist. Hours passed, each minute stretching into an eternity of terror. The figures came and went, each more grotesque and terrifying than the last. A woman with her throat slit, gurgling blood as she pleaded with me to close my eyes. A young boy, his face twisted in a scream, eyes bulging as if strangled, reaching out with clawed fingers. I couldn't, I wouldn't close my eyes. Now, as the fifth night looms, the boundary between reality and nightmare blurs. The walls of my room seem to pulse with a sickly rhythm, in sync with my pounding heart. The darkness is absolute, impenetrable. The whispering voices have grown into a cacophony of shouts and screams, battling over each other to be heard. Stay awake. Join us. Don't close your eyes. I clutch the armchair, my sanctuary, the only place I dare not move from, surrounded by salt circles I hope might protect me. Every shadow seems to move, alive with malice, 
and the air is thick with the stench of decay. My eyes are heavy, so heavy, but I must not sleep. I cannot sleep. Because in the gloom, beyond the salt and safe havens, I see them gathering. The dead, their eyes empty and accusing, their mouths agape and silent screams, their hands reaching for me from the other side. And in the deepest shadows, something else watches, waits. Its presence is immense, suffocating, a darkness within the darkness, its intentions unknown but its desire palpable. The terror is overwhelming, my heart a drumbeat of dread in the suffocating silence of the room. I want to scream, to run, but my body is too tired, my mind too frayed. The whispers turn to growls, low and threatening, a promise of pain if I dare to close my eyes. I'm on the edge, teetering on the brink of madness or death, I'm not sure which would be mercier. The room spins, the floor tilts, and somewhere in the chaos, the voices find harmony, a single, unified command. Stay awake, and as the night stretches on, endless and unforgiving, I know this is only the beginning. The real horror has yet to show itself, and I am already so very, very tired. But I must not sleep. For in sleep, I fear what dreams may come, what nightmares are waiting to claim me. So I sit, I wait, I endure, surrounded by the dark and all that it harbors. The story continues, each moment a battle, every shadow a threat. And as the line between the real and the unreal continues to blur, I know that this night might not be my last, but it very well could be the longest of my life. And so, with a heart gripped by fear and a mind shattered by fatigue, I face the darkness, praying for dawn, but fearing the nightmares that lurk just beyond my sight. The whispers grew louder, more insistent as the shadows thickened around me. Each syllable dripped with malice, twisting into the corners of the room like tendrils of smoke. I squeezed my eyes shut for a mere second, trying to block out the horrors, but that was all it took. When I opened them, the room had changed. No longer confined by the familiar walls of my house, I was in a hallway, long and narrow, with walls that pulsed like the flesh of some giant beast. The air was thick, heavy with the scent of decay and mold. I could hear a dripping sound, rhythmic and slow, like blood from a wound. The carpet under my feet squelched with each tentative step, soaked with something dark that I dared not identify. Ahead, a light flickered erratically at the end of the hall. As I moved toward it, figures began to appear from the rooms along the way. A woman, pale and gaunt, her eyes hollow pits of despair, watched me from a doorway. She raised a finger to her lips, then pointed down the hall with her other hand, her movements jerky, like a puppet on strings. Don't listen, she rasped, her voice a dry whisper that sent chills down my spine. Don't look, they'll find you. Ignoring her warning was not an option, yet moving forward seemed like stepping deeper into a nightmare. But there was nowhere else to go. Each room I passed erupted with its own terror. Children's laughter echoed, not joyful, but mocking, chilling. It twisted into cries and screams that cut off just as abruptly as they had begun. I pressed on, the light ahead growing brighter, yet never seeming to get closer. The walls started to close in, the space constricting, forcing me to squeeze through the narrowing gap. The air was suffocating, filled with the stink of rotten meat. Hands reached out from the darkness, grasping, pulling at my clothes, my hair. I fought them off, panic rising in my throat like bile. Then, the hallway ended abruptly at a large, ornate door. It stood ajar, light spilling out, flickering shadows on the ground. I pushed it open, the hinges groaning in protest. Inside, the room was a cathedral of horrors. 
Its vast ceiling stretched into darkness, and the walls were lined with shelves filled with bizarre curiosities, jars with floating things preserved in formaldehyde, books bound in strange leathers, and twisted sculptures that seemed to move just at the edge of vision. In the center of the room, a figure sat at a desk, its back to me. It was hunched over, scribbling furiously in a large book. As the door creaked, it stopped writing and slowly turned its head. Its face was a hollowed skull, eyes burning with a cold, blue fire. Do you know why you're here? It asked, its voice a cacophony of whispers that filled the room. I shook my head, too terrified to speak. To remember, it said, standing up. Its movements were smooth, unnaturally so. You must remember why you can't sleep. They want you to forget, to succumb. But you mustn't. Before I could ask who they were, the room began to dissolve, the walls melting away like mist. I was back in my chair at home, the familiar surroundings doing little to ease my terror. Hours slipped into days, or perhaps it was still the same night, time had lost all meaning. The apparitions didn't cease. They came at me from every shadow, every silence filled with whispered threats and mournful sobs. The most terrifying of them all was yet to come. As I sat, huddled in my chair, a new figure emerged from the darkness. Tall and shrouded in a black robe, it loomed over me, its face obscured by a hood. Only its eyes were visible, glowing red in the gloom. You cannot escape, it intoned, the voice echoing around the room like thunder. Sleep brings release, sleep brings oblivion. Join us in the dark. No, I whispered, my voice breaking. I won't. It laughed, the sound a clattering of bones in a dry tomb. You will. Everyone sleeps eventually. The creature reached for me with skeletal hands, fingers elongated and tipped with claws. I recoiled, pushing myself further into the chair, my heart pounding against my ribs. Suddenly, the room filled with light, blinding and pure. The figure hissed, its form dissolving into smoke under the harsh glare. When the light dimmed, it was gone, but the threat lingered in the air, a promise of return. I realized then that this was no mere battle of wills against sleep. Something darker, more sinister was at play. These apparitions, these horrors were not just figments of my fatigue-addled brain. They were real, as real as the fear that clutched at my throat. And amidst this terror, a clarity began to form. I needed answers. I needed to understand why this was happening to me, why these entities were so intent on claiming me. I needed to delve into the depths of this nightmare, to face whatever lay in its heart. But first, I had to stay awake. And so, armed with a new resolve and a terror sharpened into a weapon against my foes, I prepared for another night, another descent into the abyss of the unknown. The room seemed to pulse with anticipation, the shadows writhing in the corners, eager for the sun to set, for the darkness to envelop us once more. I sat, waiting, the salt lines around my chair my only feeble defense against the encroaching dark. And as the first whispers of night began to caress the air, I knew the true horror was yet to unfold. My journey into the depths of this waking nightmare was only just beginning. The real test, the battle for my very soul, was looming in the darkness, waiting for a moment of weakness. But I would not give in. I could not. The consequences were too dire, the stakes too high. So, with a deep breath, I steeled myself for the horrors to come, my every sense alert, my every nerve tingling with the adrenaline of fear. And the night, with all its terrors, waited eagerly to embrace me once more. 
The night held me in its chilling embrace, each tick of the clock a heavy thud against the silence that enveloped the house. My thoughts raced, desperate for a plan, any plan that might offer a shred of hope against the relentless darkness. The whispers had grown into murmurs, a constant drone that filled every crevice of the room. I could feel them gathering strength, the apparitions and shadows drawing closer as if sensing my resolve weakening. But amidst this growing terror, an idea sparked within me, a desperate, fleeting thought that just might work. It was risky, possibly fatal, but it was a chance I had to take if I ever wanted this nightmare to end. I stood up, my legs weak but determined, and started to gather items from around the house. Salt, which had become more of a comfort than a barrier, my grandmother's old crucifix, and a handful of sage I had kept for cooking. These were my weapons against the unknowable. Armed thus, I moved through the house, setting up what I hoped would be my final stand. As I prepared, the air around me thickened, pressing down like a physical weight. The shadows seemed to pulsate, watching, waiting. I ignored them, focusing on my task. I had to be ready before they decided to strike again. Once prepared, I returned to my chair, the center of my makeshift sanctuary. I lit the sage, letting the smoke fill the air, its pungent aroma a slight comfort. Holding the crucifix tightly, I closed my eyes, not to sleep, but to concentrate, to summon every ounce of mental strength I had left. The room fell eerily silent. The murmuring stopped, the air stilled. Then, it began, the most terrifying onslaught yet. The apparitions appeared, not one by one as before, but all at once, a horde of ghastly figures that crowded the room. They pressed close, their forms more solid than ever, their faces twisted in expressions of pain and rage. You cannot defy us, they hissed, a chorus of voices that filled the room. Join us. Sleep, and it will all end. No, I whispered, my voice steady despite the pounding fear. I will not give in. With that, I threw the salt in a wide circle around me, clutching the crucifix out before me like a shield. The apparitions recoiled as if burned, their forms flickering. You have no power here, I declared, the words stronger than I felt. I banish you from this place, from my mind, from my life. It felt almost absurd, these words against such nightmares. But then, the air began to shimmer, the way heat rises off pavement on a hot day. The figures began to dissolve, their forms disintegrating into mist. They screamed, a sound so terrible it seemed to shake the very foundation of the house. But it was working, they were fading. As the last of them vanished, the room brightened inexplicably, as if a heavy cloud had been lifted from over the house. I slumped back in my chair, exhausted, the crucifix still clutched in my hand. The silence that followed was profound, a complete absence of the dread that had filled the air for so long. I waited, hardly daring to breathe, half expecting them to reappear. But minutes stretched into hours, and nothing happened. Dawn crept through the curtains, a sliver of light that grew steadily brighter. I watched the sunrise, its beauty a stark contrast to the darkness of the night. As the light filled the room, I felt something shift inside me, a release of the fear that had gripped me so tightly. I stood up, my body stiff but unafraid, and walked to the window. The world outside looked the same, unchanged by the horrors of the night. But I was changed. I had faced the darkest depths of fear and come out alive. I knew I would never be the same, the shadows would always hold a different meaning for me, but I also knew I could face them now. As the day wore on, the normal sounds of life resumed. Birds chirped in the trees, 
people went about their daily routines, oblivious to the battle that had taken place in the quiet of my home. I felt a profound gratitude for the mundane, the ordinary. But there was one more task I needed to complete. I gathered the remnants of my battle, the salt, the sage, the crucifix, and buried them in the backyard, a symbolic gesture of burying the past, the terror. I planted flowers over the spot, a mark of new life, of hope. As I stood back and looked at the fresh earth, I felt a peace settle over me. The nightmare was over, the apparitions gone. I had survived, but more than that, I had conquered. And in that moment, I knew that whatever shadows might come, whatever whispers might rise in the dark, I would be ready. I had looked into the abyss, faced the darkest horrors one could imagine, and I had emerged not just intact, but stronger. The sun set that evening in a blaze of colors, pinks, oranges, and deep purples. I watched it, feeling a connection to the world that I hadn't felt in a long time. The darkness would always be there, lurking in the corners, waiting. But so would the light, and I would always strive to stay in its warmth. And that, I realized, was the greatest victory of all. <laughs>